glycine. You've probably heard a little bit more about it. And in today's show, we're going to talk more about this non-essential amino acid that is very important and actually has been linked in recently published studies with better biologic aging, improved recovery after intense exercise, and is even used in conditions like schizophrenia and other neurologic-based conditions. It might actually improve sleep duration, sleep quality. Glycine has been shown to be very important in phase one detoxification in the body, which all of us need to help to improve our body's ability to excrete persistent organic pollutants and heavy metals and, and various endocrine disrupting compounds that are in our clothing, our air, food, water, even our furniture that I'm sitting on. Thankfully, this doesn't have any flame retardants, but for most people, we are exposed to a lot of stuff all the time. And the amino acid glycine, you should put it on your radar. We're talking about a study today that I want to share with you some research from some quotes, some images to help you better understand why you may want to consider adding more glycine to your diet. It's really affordable. It tastes good. And especially if you take glycine at night, it may actually improve your sleep. And you might be getting it anyway if you take magnesium bisglycinate chelate. So for every 250 milligrams of magnesium bisglycinate chelate, elemental magnesium, you're getting over 1,500 milligrams of glycine, which is where therapeutic dosages start around 1,500 milligrams. Uh, we've talked a lot about glycine and pairing glycine with N-acetylcysteine, the important rate-limiting amino acid precursor to your body's in most abundant intracellular antioxidant molecule known as glutathione made by your liver as well as other cells. So Baylor University, in brief, just small side note, has uh, conducted a 12-week clinical study uh, comparing the effects of glycine and NAC together compared to placebo, finding that it, uh, the combination of the two amino acids, glycine and N-acetylcysteine, help to improve various aspects of biologic aging, reduce blood pressure, uh, visceral adiposity, uh, waist circumference was reduced in the intervention group versus the placebo. Uh, other markers of uh, cellular senescence and biologic aging were improved with the combination supplement of N-acetylcysteine and glycine. So let's talk more today just about glycine specifically uh, and where you get it, what it does, and beyond. So the review paper that we're going to talk about uh, today is titled The Effect of Glycine Administration on the Characteristics of Physiological Systems in human adults a systematic review and so uh, these investigators looked at 34 different studies uh, in healthy adults as well as diseased adults there's actually several studies in schizophrenia i was not aware of this research on schizophrenia as well as people with ocd alcohol-based hallucinations uh, stroke symptoms as well as insomnia uh, finding that in all these different clinical conditions uh, taking more than a gram of glycine per day can actually improve some of the symptoms that are ascribed to those different conditions. And you can see on the left and right side, we have disease states and we have healthy states and where glycine has been shown to be healthy, uh, to improve health. Well, uh, research shows uh, in humans, again, they're drawing data off these 34 uh, studies in humans, reduced fatigue. Uh, decrease uh, psychomotor vigilance, decrease daytime sleepiness, increasing sleep quality, improving cognition, and also uh, affecting headaches, which I think is important. So that's more of like the brain-based effects, but what about short-term and a single bolus dose when it comes to metabolic improvements? Well, research shows that glycine can help improve the insulin response, increase glucagon secretion, which is great. So glucagon obviously is a hormone that sort of uh, is increased when insulin is low and it helps your body uh, suppress appetite and improve blood sugar regulation, uh, as well as dip into stored adipose tissue or fat tissue uh, as a source of energy and possibly increasing growth hormone. So taking glycine at night may increase growth hormone. What I think is interesting in marathon runners, glycine has been shown to improve uh, gastrointestinal function and possibly enhance recovery from intense vigorous exercise such as running a marathon. Well, what about in more disease states like people who have insulin resistance or pre-diabetes? Well, it turns out that glycine has been shown to decrease hemoglobin A1C, decrease HOMA IR scores, which is a compilation of a few different biomarkers that is aggregated in what's known as a HOMA IR score. And um, that obviously is, is a good thing. We don't really worry so much about total cholesterol, but glycine has been shown to increase total cholesterol, uh, probably more so, but through its ability to improve insulin sensitivity. We know that 
sometimes cholesterol goes up as you get more metabolically healthy. In fact, when people, I work with a lot of people who have blood work over the years, and as their A1C goes up, their LDL and total cholesterol tends to go down. And I know that sort of flies in the face of conventional dogma when it comes to you know the mainstream sort of understanding of metabolic function, but we see this often. And I have many labs that I can share with you if you really want uh, to be convinced of that, but that is known to be true in the literature as well. Uh, glycine has been shown to decrease both systolic and diastolic blood pressure, decrease inflammatory biomarkers, increase grip strength. I mean, that's, I think, important because all of us want, just want to age better, right? That's why you're watching these videos. You want to feel better, age better, um, and hopefully get stronger, more fit as you get older, or at least preserve what you have. Uh, and glycine has been shown to increase fat, free fat mass. So this would be muscle mass. Uh, people with an overactive bladder, glycine might help with that. We're not really sure why exactly. Uh, in prostate symptoms, so benign prostatic hypertrophy and things like that. So we have a lot of different you know, studies in humans, uh, in immune issues, cardiovascular issues, central nervous system issues, like I mentioned, schizophrenia, insomnia, and so forth, uh, digestive issues, uh, muscular issues, and we just mentioned the bladder and the renal issues. So there's evidence to suggest that glycine affects all of these different biologic systems. Now, I think the question is mechanistically, why and what is the dose? Well, research shows that you know some of these studies vary between 0.8 grams per kilogram of body weight, which is a super high dose, or between 1.5 and 3 grams of glycine per day in dosed in the evening time before bed, uh, hopefully to help to surge growth hormone a little bit and then also to affect the sensitivity of the GABA receptor and activity of GABA in the brain, which is an inhibitory neurotransmitter that can help you uh, sleep better. Now, what I think is interesting, here's a quote from the paper, 15 of the 18 studies reported significant positive effects when it comes to overall cognitive performance with glycine. So most studies do show that uh, oral glycine can improve cognitive performance and sleep quality and sleep duration. As I mentioned, not many of you, I wouldn't suspect, watch these videos for schizophrenia and related uh, symptoms, but there is research showing that glycine can affect can improve cognitive uh, states in individuals that suffer from schizophrenia, overactive bladder syndrome. I think that's something that should be considered, as well as the effects on the immune system. I think that's important. So various studies look at different cytokines and levels of cytokines and so forth, uh, finding that glycine can uh, improve aspects within uh, the immune system. And so getting down to the nitty gritty, you know, that's why I like to make these videos and you presumably watch these mechanistically. Why? How? What, what is glycine doing? And what is it? Is it because of it's affecting glutathione? Is it affecting GABA in the brain, calcium signaling? Um, I think that's really interesting. And, and let's sort of explore what these investigators uh, say here with regards to the mechanism of action. Schizophrenia is hypothesized to result from the hypofunctioning of the NMDA receptors. Several reports cited herein have particularly underscored the potential effect of glycine on the N-methyl-D aspartate receptor, the NMDA receptor, in eliciting positive neurologic outcomes. Consistent with this notion, brain aging is associated with reduced NMDA receptor function, in turn leading to declined memory and learning performance issues. Going on, NMDA receptors have also been implicated in other age-related diseases such as diabetes and hypertension. In healthy populations, oral glycine administration before bedtime has been shown to improve sleep quality through the action of glycine on the NMDA receptor in the suprachiasmatic nucleus, which is, of course, the regulatory body of your body's circadian clock system. So for those of you that have social jet lag or you travel or you work the night shift periodically, glycine may be helpful in in training your body's central pacemaker in the body, in the brain, which I think is interesting. Uh, therefore, one possible mechanism by which glycine may confer its geroprotective pro longevity enhancing effects uh, may be through its action on the NMDA receptor. Although further research is required to understand this chronotherapeutic and tissue specific effects of an interaction and the interplay between multiple physiological systems in healthy disease and diseased populations. So in conclusion, Glycine administration, like taking glycine supplementally, one gram up to three grams per day 
is most effective in improving characteristics of the central nervous system, they write, especially in ameliorating neurological symptoms in populations with psychiatric illnesses, most notably in schizophrenia. Aging is associated with the decline in function of various physiological systems and elucidating the molecular underpinnings and mechanisms of these disease states are critical in determining strategies to prevent aging and age-related diseases. Although the administration of glycine may improve the characteristics of multiple physiological systems, there is currently limited evidence in supporting the preventative effects for healthy population, which warrants the need for future research and larger randomized control trials and so forth. But because glycine is affordable and the potential upside is, is quite high when it comes to taking you know, glycine and there's minimal downside. Considering this as a supplement for folks that have underlying insulin resistance or sleep issues or neurologic issues, I think is worthy of consideration. Um, and so you might be able to get enough glycine from your magnesium bisglycinate chelate supplement, just 250 milligrams of magnesium bisglycinate chelate will give you 1500 milligrams of glycine, which uh, is more than many people are getting from their diet. So you might be saying, well, where do I get glycine? You know, it's actually found in a lot of like poultry skin uh, in the cartilage and tendon aspect of uh, meat and so forth. And so if you do bone broths and stews or take collagen, you're getting a lot of glycine from there. Uh, if you cook you know, whole chicken, instead of just getting the boneless, skinless chicken breast, get a whole chicken and put it in the slow cooker or the crock pot. You're getting all of that extra glycine from the skin and from the tendons and the cartilaginous tissues. From a supplemental standpoint, I'll put links in the description below. I'm a huge fan of glycine supplementation and have been for years. And we have a, a very popular NAC glycine supreme uh, I'm not making this video to like just promote that that's there if you want it it tastes great you get both glycine and uh, and acetylcysteine and taurine together a lot of great reviews uh, over on Amazon and on our website so that's just one of many options for you but I would consider taking this at night uh, I do and have been for many years now um, a gram and a half at night and I also take magnesium as well so I'm getting enough of the uh, glycine from magnesium to hit that sort of three gram threshold but just wanted you to know that there's pretty good evidence in humans to suggest that glycine has particularly uh, brain-based effects and sleep-enhancing properties, as well as potentially helping with recovery from intense exercise and improving insulin sensitivity in individuals who may be prone to insulin resistance. So I would like to know what you think. Hopefully you found this video helpful, and we'll catch you on a future show down the road.